you're a beautiful woman, but are you letting that beauty shine through you? Are you allowing people to feel your true essence? Make no mistake that that is a very important thing and that is something that the men are looking for or want in a woman. You can't receive it, but you have to understand what has to be in place to receive it from that specific man or what's going to push that man or inspire that man to want to commit to you or to any woman. And as I began this video, I said, you are beautiful, but many of you may not be tapping into that beauty, may not be allowing it to shine, may not understand what really creates that light around you. So I want to help break it down. And as always, be sure to watch the whole video because I always have an important message at the end. So let's get to it. Number one on the list of things men find beautiful in a woman is balance. And what do I mean by balance? I mean a freak in the sheets and a lady in the streets. <laughs> All right? So listen, I think the reality is people in general love balance. As a woman, you like balance. As a man, we like balance. And it's a beautiful thing to see a woman who knows how to do both. All right? To just be that woman who can be brought in front of their mothers and be conservative and all these things that may be viewed as lady in the street, so to speak, to only be that can become a problem. The same way to only be the freak in the sheets can also be a problem. You got to be able to have a balance. Now, when I say be a freak in the sheets, I'm not saying being a freak with everybody, but I am saying that when you show the ability to do that, to have that balance in your life, that is a thing men are drawn to. Because people want a little bit of everything. And when I say a little bit of everything, let me not put it like that. Because it's not really a little bit of everything, but it's a little bit of those two sides. The same way I believe women want a little bit of bad boy and some good guy in a man. Well, men want that freak and that lady. So tap into that. Be mindful of that. And, and make sure you are showing not just the balance in that way, but versatility and just in general. Again, your ability to wear a nice dress but also look good when you're dressing casual, all right? Your ability to go out and have fun, but then know how to carry yourself in certain places. This is a great thing to have. As a woman in general, forget just what men find beautiful in you. That's just a great ability or trait, whatever you want to call it, to possess. So learn how to find that balance and be comfortable in both places. Be comfortable with both of those energies, so to speak, so that you can shine more uh, brightly in your life. Number two is confidence, all right? So I always say, listen, confidence looks good on everybody. And it damn sure looks good on a woman, all right? But to be honest with you, what I have learned in all my years of doing this is that a lot of women have a faux confidence. It's not real. You, women are saying I'm beautiful. Women, I'm saying I look good, but you don't really believe it at the core. You don't carry yourself as such. You don't exude that confident energy. Now, I'm not saying that to be, you know, to come down on you or for you to beat yourself up about it. I'm just saying it for you to be aware, to, to understand the need to, uh, to identify what is throwing your confidence off. What is hindering you from believing more in, your, in yourself? And now understand something. Confidence is not just a mindset. It is very much a mindset. You, you do have to wrap your mind around that and you do have to heal from anything that has caused trauma or has caused you to have low self-esteem. But it is also taking action in improving the areas of your life that would help you be more confident. Because to me, confidence is both mindset and results. And what I mean by that is, using a basketball analogy, a shooter, a guy who shoots the ball, he could be a great shooter. But if he misses his next 10 shots, he may start to lose confidence because he's not seeing the results, all right? And by maybe making an adjustment, maybe slowing himself down, maybe doing something different to get that shot back helps him regain his confidence because now the shot starts falling. So as a woman, as a human being, when you're, you can sit there and say, oh yeah, I'm great, I'm this, I'm that. But it's really hard to stay in that mindset when you're not seeing results. So you got to find that happy medium, that place where you feel good about who you are, you feel good about what you see in the mirror, 
but you're also getting the types of results that help you sustain that confidence or make it easier for you to sustain that confidence. So take an inventory of yourself and be willing to work on things. Be willing to evaluate how you're presenting yourself physically, uh, your dress code. Be willing to evaluate even finding that hairstyle that you might like. And notice I say you like because I could give you a hairstyle to try, right? And it might look good on you. But if you don't like the way it looks, you still won't be confident. You won't exude that energy that speaks confidence to people. So it's always a combination of what looks good on you, but what you feel good in, what you also like. You've got to be happy with it. And that's why it's as simple as, think about there are times where you put on a certain dress or an outfit that you really liked. And because you really liked it, you felt so much better. You were more confident. You were more positive. You were more upbeat. So these things have an impact. So again, look into what's going to help you be more confident. But let me extend this conversation of confidence, all right? Because yes, men love confident women in the sense that you want to you wanna feel good about who you are. But confidence also in the sense of not being insecure. Especially when it comes to a man who is going to be around other women, all right? And listen, I'm not talking about the man who's going out there, running the streets, trying to cause problems. No, I'm talking about situations where maybe he works at a job where there are women there. And one of the most difficult things for a man to have to deal with is a woman who's not confident, who's insecure, who's now, because of that insecurity and lack of confidence, is going to make his life hell and stress him out about the fact of, well, what you're doing around these women and feel some kind of way because these women find interest in him, even though he's not doing anything with them. So you got to be confident in the sense of knowing the value that you possess and understanding and embracing that when a man has chosen to be with you, to, to know that, listen, you're better than the rest. And it's not even about like, if on paper, there, there aren't going to be other women who are quote unquote better than you. It's about you're better for him. All right. And if he has chosen you and he is saying you're the one for him, embrace that. Because I've seen so many women lose relationships. So many women create, wreak havoc in their relationship because they were not confident about their position in the relationship. And again, I understand that sometimes the man creates that lack of, of comfortableness, creates that insecurity. But I've also seen tons of situations where he's trying his hardest, but your struggles because of what's going on within you. So make sure your confidence extends to you being able to be secure, you being able to not be threatened by other women, you knowing your place in that man's life, and you knowing the value that you bring to the table so that a man's not going to just want to trade you in for somebody else. So now let's get to the third thing on this list. And this is no particular order. But the third beautiful thing women find, I mean, men, men finding women that are beautiful, all right, is the ability to think logically, all right? So let me break this down for you. Now, let me say this. I, I am a believer and I completely co-sign the fact that women are more emotionally wired, typically. There's always going to be exceptions to the rule, but typically women are more emotionally wired. Women have, in my opinion, a higher level of intuition. And I in no way want a woman to reject her natural state, to reject her, her intuition and all these things. However, what I do want to encourage women to do is to become a master over their emotions, a master over their intuition. And even, again, I have to repeat it, over your emotions is the big one. Because what I have seen is women allowing their emotions to cause them to make bad decisions, to create uh, a, a toxic energy in a relationship, to just wreak havoc and cause problems, all right? So when a man meets a woman who knows how to think logically. And really all that means is a woman who doesn't allow her emotions to get the best of her, can take a step back, can receive the information being presented to her and process it from a logical place. Now again, that is not 
to mean you should ignore intuition. And that's why I'm separating intuition and emotion. Because intuition is, is to me your spirit guiding you. It's that inner voice. It's that thing that does not need logic to give you an answer, direction, or wisdom, all right? And I do believe you should listen to intuition. But again, what happens in many situations are women being led by emotion and fear, being led by analyzing and letting things trigger you, all right, and going off of those triggers rather than calming yourself and again, mastering your emotion, getting control of the fear, and thinking through things properly and calmly. That, that right there is huge, and it's beautiful, and it speaks to so many men's hearts because, again, it's not something that men get to experience all the time with women. That's one of the, the, the complaints a lot of men have with women, is the inability to at least sometimes Think with logic, all right? And, and again, before any of y'all say it, because I know some of you are saying it, some of you are like, well, I'm logical. I don't think all emotionally. Cool. So if this doesn't apply to you and you've already mastered your emotions or you have the ability to think logically, awesome, bravo, thank goodness. However, that doesn't mean there aren't tons of women. And when I make these messages, it's, it never means all. But yes, I would argue that the majority still struggle with this. So understanding how to get this under control, how to tap into that logical side of you, because we all have that emotional and logical side. We all have masculine and feminine energy. It's about mastering these things, uh, letting one be more dominant than the other, and again, knowing how to use them in the right way to serve greater purpose and to create more harmony and peace in our lives and our relationships. So I encourage you to do that because yes, this is one of those things that men find beautiful in a woman. All right, so on to number four on the list. And the fourth thing on this list is a sense of humor. Learn how to laugh. Lighten the hell up. Stop being so tense and on edge and not knowing how to take a damn joke. Listen, all right, even while you're watching this now, if you're mad at me because of how I just said it, you need to lighten up. You, you're the perfect person to talk to right now because you've got to learn how to take it easy. Men want women who aren't going to stress them out. Men want women who know how to laugh, laugh at the joke, laugh at themselves sometimes. Not everything has to be taken personally and made into a huge deal. Now, when I say made into a huge deal, I felt something hit me, all right? Because I know that sometimes as women, You've had situations that were genuinely big deals to you, and that man or men in your life have dismissed it, have told you, oh, you're tripping, you're being crazy. And I want you to know that, listen, I don't condone that. I don't want men dismissing your genuine feelings. I don't want men devaluing what's going on within you at that moment, all right? So if something is genuinely a problem for you, all right, cool, let's talk about it, let's work through it. And I would encourage any man who watches this video that that's the approach you take. However, what I am saying is as a woman, make sure that you're learning how not to turn things that don't have to become a big issue into a big issue. Learning how not to, again, be quick to be offended, especially in today's world where so many people have become so much more sensitive and quick to be offended to the point where I feel like people are looking for something to be offended by, all right? That's a very miserable life to live. And that, that hurts you in so many more ways than one. Forget just dealing with men. In your own life, how happy can you be when you're always offended by something? Listen, being offended is a choice. You're choosing to take it personally. You're choosing to internalize it. You're choosing it, choosing for it to have a negative impact on you. That may seem ridiculous to some, but really think about it. You can choose to just let it go. And I understand some situations may go, you know, too far and, 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 I, and I know we have to be flexible to a certain degree. But again, try to your best abilities to learn how to take some of that edge off and understand that everything does not have to be taken to a negative place. 
So learning how to laugh. And so when I also, let me say this. When I say sense of humor, I'm not saying you got to come, become a female, I don't know, Kevin Hart tomorrow and learn how to crack jokes or something. Like, I'm not saying that's the role you have to play in regards to having a sense of humor. It's just being able to laugh. Being able to be lighthearted and enjoy life, I think that is huge. And yes, that definitely is something men find beautiful in a woman. All right, so now let's get to the next one. But before we do, real quick, I want you to get the book, How to Get a Man to Cherish You. Now listen, don't get triggered by the title. I always have to say that because so many people, why I got to get a man to do anything? Listen, (laughs) chill, trust me. Read the book. You're going to understand why the title is this way and why you're going to love and find this book extremely helpful. Women are going crazy for it. Click the link in the description or in the comment section. Get your copy. Trust me, you are going to love it. Now, on to the next point, the next thing that men find beautiful in a woman, and that is natural beauty. Now, listen. I know there's a huge debate at times about natural beauty. And I, let me make this clear. I am not speaking on natural beauty to shame women who may not be walking in a natural state right now. I am not here to shame surgeries, makeups, or any of that. You want to do that as a woman? That is your choice. You love it. I love it. Make yourself happy. All right? Cool. What I am saying, though, is... You still got to learn how to be beautiful in your natural state. You still got to learn how to work it when you're natural. You still got to understand that you can't walk 24 hours a day with your makeup on. And and though surgery, of course, is going to last, that's a different topic. The point is learning how to just be beautiful in a natural state. Men love that. Men, Men don't really care for all the extra makeup. And let me say this, and again, I say this respectfully and with love. It seems like once upon a time, makeup used to be an enhancer of beauty. That thing that kind of took it up a a little notch, right? But in today's world, makeup has gotten so what many view as extreme as far as the level of makeup people use and and how many different things I got to do now. I hear all these words about shading and contouring. I, I, I don't even know what the hell it is. I just hear it, all right? But either way... It's like now women transform their face instead of enhance their face, all right? Now, again, that's your choice, all right? If that's what you like and you feel good about it and you're getting the results you want, I'm not here to knock it. But be careful because the last thing you want is to look like one woman with the makeup on and a completely different woman with the makeup off, all right? You, You don't want no problems to where when you wash your face, everything changes and now this man is like, ah, I didn't sign up for this. All right, so just be careful, but again, enjoy yourself. But the point, getting back to the point, natural beauty, all right? And so even when you are in your natural state, it doesn't mean walk around and not give a damn, all right? You still got to wash your face. You still got to put some moisturizer on your skin, all right? You still got to comb your hair. I mean, you still do little things that, again, allow you to look your best in your natural state. And I think Even if you are a lover of makeup and all these things, I do think it will be good for you to give yourself, and and I don't know like how often every woman wears her makeup that loves makeup. So what I'm saying could be uh, something that you guys already do, all right? So excuse me if that's the case. But just having days where you don't go any makeup at all, you know, maybe a couple days out the week or whatever to lift your skin, breathe more, for you to also become more comfortable, because I do feel like there's a lot of women who they become very confident with their makeup on to the point where they struggle to operate with it off. All right. And I think that you have to get used to being in your natural state. And, and let me throw this out there because this isn't just a woman thing. I know of men who don't like going anywhere unless they have a haircut. All right. They, they don't know how to be confident without being completely on point so to speak and so even for those men i would be like hey yo you gotta you gotta go somewhere even when you're not looking your best because you got to be comfortable and confident no matter where you are at that moment you won't always have access to those things you may not always be in a position to throw your favorite lipstick on and what you're going to do you're going to feel some kind of way and now be negative or be have low self-esteem because you didn't get to have that vice 
of that makeup to throw on or whatever that thing was. Like, I want you to find things that make you feel good, but I don't want you to become so attached to them that you don't know how to operate without them, all right? And so being able to walk and shine in your natural state is great for you, uh, great for, for you mentally and emotionally, but yes, it is something that men find a lot of beauty in because what better than to have that woman that you see as such a beautiful creature in her natural state. And then, yeah, if you throw on makeup, you might be even better. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Some of y'all aren't better. You actually kind of look worse. Now, let me not say that. Let me take that back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll say this. Some of y'all are doing the makeup in a way that's not actually making you look better. So I would just encourage you to make sure that when you do it, you're doing it in a way that actually works for you. But again, natural beauty, work on it, embrace it. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so now let's get to number six, all right? And number six on the list of things that men find beautiful in a woman, intelligence, all right? Now, I feel like some of y'all are like, hell no. Men don't give a damn about no intelligence. They don't care about no smart woman. All they care about is how a woman looks. And I'm not going to lie to you. Are there men out there who don't care about what's going on in a woman's head? Yes, there are. But plenty of men embrace and see value in an intelligent woman. Now, I feel the need to mention, not arrogantly intelligent. Not intelligent in the way that you speak down to people. Not intelligent in the way that you try to make someone feel stupid. Not intelligent in the way that you feel the need to try to talk circles around individuals. And let me say this, like I, even as an author and a speaker, I've read books that at times I felt like this person's focus is to sound smart more than it is to get the message across, all right? And that kind of intelligence can be off-putting. Because it's like, yo, what, what's really... The, what you really focused on here? Are you focused on communicating and connecting with people or you just want to seem like you're smarter than everybody else, all right? Don't get caught up in that kind of intelligence, all right? But yes, having general intelligence, and you know you got to be a rocket scientist or, or anything like that, but being able to have intelligent conversations, being able to think critically, again, not being a slave to your emotional emotions, all right, and being able to use logic, those are all beautiful things. And that intelligence can be viewed as a huge asset in a relationship. Because even the man who views himself as the head of the household and leading the relationship is going to see or love or desire a woman who can bring a level of intelligence to the table that she can help make even better decisions, that they can come together, talk things through, and now do what, make a decision that's going to be best for everybody. So yes, intelligence is definitely good, but also let me say that there's book smart and there's street smart. And so I think it's always good for everyone to have a good balance, all right? Kind of what I mentioned earlier about freaking the sheets, lady in the streets. Well, yes, someone who can be book smart and have a lot of education is awesome, but when you lack a little bit of street smarts, you know, for some guys that may not completely work. But again, you know, intelligence isn't all about that, the person. You still got to make it about you, but learning how to be well-rounded with your intelligence is definitely a good thing to strive for and definitely something that men find beautiful in a woman. And now we are at number seven, and this is one of my... I mean, I love all of these, but this is one of my favorite ones. And number seven is smiling and positive energy, all right? Now, some of y'all probably frowned your face at the word smiling, okay? And, and you already look at me with a side eye because some of you guys feel like, why well, I got to smile? What's the big deal? You know, I, some of you hate when men tell you to smile. And I'm not here to advocate for men telling you to smile when they see you in the street, However, I am here to, t to encourage you to work towards smiling more often because it definitely brings out the beauty of a woman. There's a study that they did. I wish I had all the details, but what I know for sure is in the study, they found that women who smiled were found more attractive than women who did it. And so this means women smiling in you know, everyday life, walking about. This means smiling in your profile picture on social media, smiling in your picture for online dating. 
The smile conveys a pro being you being more approachable, more pleasant. Um, just again, someone that a man would want to be around because you got to understand that what men desire so much from a partnership, from a woman is peace. That is the big thing, especially as a man evolves, uh, makes something out of himself, you know, is moving in the right direction. Peace becomes such a huge priority. And so smiling at least conveys, even, even when it's not always telling the whole story, it at least conveys the potential of a more peaceful, joyful, loving woman. And that's why I said it's about smiling and positive energy because I don't want y'all to fake smiling out here. I don't want it to be a smile on the surface, but you miserable from within or you raise hell when they get with you. I want you to learn how to exude and walk in more positive energy. And again, this isn't just for him and the relationship. It's for you. It's for your quality of life. It's for you to be in a better place physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's just going to be a benefit overall. So learning how to tap into that. If you're struggling with positive energy, identify the negative impacts in your life, the things that are pouring negative energy. It could be music. TV, the food that you're eating, all right, lack of sleep, lack of taking care of yourself, all these things can pour negative energy or throw you off in a, into a negative place, which makes it hard for you to first create that positive energy from within and then smile. And I always say smiling becomes easy and natural when you're at peace from within. So that's where you want to place your focus, creating peace, happiness, and positivity from within so now everything starts to come out of you the right way and you start to live a higher quality of life. All right, so number eight. And so I, I said the last one was one of my favorites. So here's another one of my favorites. <laughs> I really like this one, all right? Number eight on the list of things men find beautiful in a woman is a willingness or desire to cater and nurture, all right? Now, again, some of y'all may get a little sensitive with that, all right? But listen, y'all were, were singing with Beyonce years ago, talking about cater to your man, all right? So, I, so don't get mad now <laughs> that I'm telling you this is something that men find beautiful in a woman. And the unfortunate reality is that we live in a world where a lot of women don't embrace that anymore. A lot of women look at the man like, do it your damn self. We equal. Why, why I got to fix your plate? Why, why I got to make sure you're good? Why I got to do this? Why I got to do that? I mean, my goodness. Because it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And when you're a woman that shows a willingness and desire to cater, and that's the thing. When I say willingness and desire, because I don't want y'all forcing yourselves to be something that you're currently not. Now, I say currently because... I believe that you can get there, but some of you may be very detached from these types of principles and traits that it can be very difficult for you to walk in it. And though I would love to see you practice it and understand you can practice it without having a man, practice being catering and nurturing with family and friends. If you got kids, you may already be doing it, but bump it up a notch if you can. You know, like implement it in your everyday life with people in general so that when a man comes, it becomes a more natural thing for you, all right? Because like, I know a woman who's a good friend of mine. She loves catering and nurturing people. She always has guests at her house. She's always serving, make them their best, everything. She just loves doing it. She takes joy in it. And so it would be great to, to, for y'all to be at a point where you can take joy in it and see the beauty of it, all right? And see, and, and, and please understand, I'm not trying to set you up to just cater to some man and he's not doing for you. If you watch my videos, then you know I'm all about you getting what you deserve as well. But I do want you to look into this. I do want you to start practicing it. I do want you to understand that, yes, that quality is huge. And I have to say it, that quality is huge wife material, all right? That's a big deal right there. For a man to find a woman who loves to cater and nurture, 
Yes, that's gonna that at least raises the, the chances or raises your stock as far as damn, this is someone that I would want to spend my life with rather than let me just have some fun with her real quick. Not saying there aren't men out there who will still want to just have fun. That's a whole different story. But the point is, this quality of catering and nurturing is huge. It's big. So definitely embrace it because it's definitely a beautiful, beautiful thing. And now last but not least, and if you watch my videos, then you might know what it is. Feminine energy. And so really and truly, pretty much everything we talked about on this list is, is a part or pours into feminine energy, all right? Knowing how to be loving, sweet, supportive, charming, vulnerable. I got to stress the word vulnerable because to me, being vulnerable and being feminine go hand in hand. Now, please do not confuse being vulnerable with weak. Do not confuse being vulnerable with being a pushover. Do not confuse vulnerable with letting some man use and abuse you. All right? That's not what I'm advocating for. That's not true feminine energy. Because feminine energy is power. It's an amazing thing. All right? It will bring forth a greater level of peace, happiness, and you can still draw the line and set a standard of what is acceptable and not acceptable, all right, but still walk in your feminine energy. You can still be loving and vulnerable, but not tolerate nonsense in your relationship. So please do not confuse the two because many women have become detached from their feminine energy because you viewed it as that's what got me played. That's what got me taken advantage of. That's why men don't appreciate women. No, no, no. Feminine energy was never your problem. Your selection process was. Who you chose to deal with, the men you allowed yourself to entertain, not trusting your intuition that that wasn't even the man you should be dealing with. Those were the real issues, not feminine energy. Because again, femininity is beautiful. So learn how to tap into it. And I have to say this real quick. It's not just about all the things we mentioned on the list. Well, it is. But also how you take care of yourself physically. And what I mean by that is how you're eating and sleeping and, 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 and making sure that you have the energy. Again, not taking care of ourselves properly can throw our hormones off. And those hormones can have an impact on our ability to walk in certain energy, whether it be positivity, femininity, and all these different things. So be mindful of that and everything that you can do to raise your level or raise your feminine energy and really see the power and the beauty of it. this story. Several years ago, I knew a guy and we were on a trip together. He meets this woman and it was a group of us friends. We we're all together. He meets this woman and everyone's like, yo, this, this might be it for him. Like she was exactly what he likes, you know, her physical appearance and, and the way her personality, they get up, got along amazingly well. And he seemed extremely happy with her. And so there was a lot of talk between our friends and him about him possibly committing to this woman. But he had just really started talking to her, so he wanted to take a little time. Fast forward a month later, and before I say fast forward, let me say, despite all this chatter, I sensed something was missing. That's just me. That's how I am. All right, but let me continue. So fast forward a month later. He ends up proceeding into a relationship with this woman. He, he, you know, continues to talk to her, continues to date. Things are going well. Now he gets into a relationship. And again, everyone's pushing this, you know, this is the one. This is it. This is it for him. It's over. He's turning in his player card, right? <laughs> so uh, time continues. And now we're in month three, let's say. And by month three, we sit down and have a talk. And he's telling me how he really is into this woman. He, he can see a future with her. However, he's having conflicting desires of being in this relationship versus enjoying being single. He was really just starting to get a, a, a hang of enjoying his single life and reaping what some, would, some men might consider the benefits of being single, all right? And he was like, damn, you know, this great woman came along. I didn't want to let her go because she's that awesome. But at the same time, I feel like I have one foot in the door, one foot out. 
And so I told him again, I said, listen, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I know everyone's been saying she's the one and this is it, you know, and make it happen with her. But I genuinely feel like she's not the one for you. And for me, I'm going to be honest with y'all. The fact that he had this conflict of wanting to still be single was even more proof she wasn't the one. Now, let me explain something. It's not to say that just because a man falls in love with a woman or believes she's the one, that he'll never have a desire for another woman, that he'll never... And when I say desire, not that he wants to flat out leave his woman for another woman, but he's going to see other women he's attracted to, um, may have thoughts about. That's human, all right? And it can happen to women as well. But what I do believe is that when a man finds the one, he at least at that time believes or desires only her. When I say believes, believes he can commit to just her. He at least has the mindset of, I don't need these other women, forget them. So when a man can't say that to me, that says to me something is off here. Something's not right. And again, it doesn't mean she isn't genuinely amazing. But there's some kind of disconnect. Anyways, let's continue forward. So now, the month after that, I get a call from him. They break up. Now, them breaking up wasn't simply about what me and him discussed. He added more to the story by saying she was very uh, insecure. And those insecurities caused a lot of issues and back and forth in their situation. So that contributed to the breakup. Now, let me add this real quick. And I know some of y'all are going to really feel me on this. Sometimes we're quick to call people insecure. But when we take a deeper look, especially for women, there's an argument to be made that that woman's insecurity was a symptom of her spirit knowing this man was not fully all in. All right? A lot of you as women sense something's off. Sense he's not completely there. Even though he's doing other great things, even though his words are nice, you're feeling something's not there. Or it, again, he's not fully committed, but you want so desperately to hold on that you ignore this but, or, or you try to overlook this. But in overlooking it, it still makes you nervous. It still starts to create insecurity. And that now starts to manifest into behaviors that can actually now wreak havoc. And now he gets to say, well, it's your insecurity that's the problem, rather than acknowledging the reality that he was never completely all in. But anyway, I digress. That's, that's just a point I needed to make, but let's move on to the point of this story, all right? And so, again, they break up. I want to say like a month after that, this man meets another woman. And with this woman, they hit it off. And he seems to have that twinkle in his eye again. All right? But this time, it seems a little different. It, it, it seems a little bit more is there. To sum up this story, because I can go into a lot of details, I want to say two more months after that, this man is completely all in. When I ask him the question, well, how are you feeling about being single, living your single? Oh, I ain't worried about that no more. I'm good. I'm done. I know this is where I want to be. And eventually he goes on to propose to this woman and become engaged to, you know, get married. Now, why did I give you that story? One, here was a man that in woman A, people will say, oh, he, he has a fear of commitment or these men don't know how to be serious or this and that and the other. But then he got with woman B and committed like that. Woman B, no hesitation, no issue. And this is why I said to you in the very beginning of this video that it's not completely true when we say men don't want to commit. It's just that it's going to boil down to, are you and this man the right match? And I want to stress the right match, not are you a good woman? Because woman A in that story was a great woman. He, he never would say anything I mean, other than the insecurity issue, he, he did not say this woman lacked great qualities. It just wasn't there. So now let me break down for you what a man typically needs to commit. And, and I want to give this from the angle of 
genuine commitment, not just holding on to women because you provide a certain benefit they don't want to let go of and that man's going to use you. All right. So genuine commit. So number one is he needs to have peace. So when I say he needs to have peace, there's two ways we can look at this. There is peace about him being confident that this is where he wants to be. As I gave you the example with the story, he did not have peace with girl A. He wanted her. He was feeling her. There was a lot of desire there, but he did not have peace about being in a committed relationship with her. Woman B, he had that peace. And so that allowed him to confidently move forward with her. But then it's also peace from the angle of what the woman provides and brings to his life. And I have to stress that this becomes so much more crucial when you're dealing with a man who has a lot going on in his life or just has stuff going for him or it's a man who's driven, ambitious, trying to make things happen, you know, um, who, who's trying to be a good, strong leader in a relationship because that guy is encountering various forms of chaos, stress, uh, feeling overwhelmed, whatever, in life around him. Because that's just the way life is. And hell, you as a woman, depending on what you're doing or engaging in or how ambitious you are, you're encountering some of the same things. And so you should know that nobody wants to have to leave that to come home to stress. No one has to, wants to have to leave that to then deal with a partner who does not provide a sanctuary of love and peace. And so for a man... And I feel the need to say this, especially a man with options. I know people, a lot of women don't like hearing this men having options thing, all right? But it's true, especially for a man who has options, he needs that woman he's going to commit to to be a, 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 a getaway from all the stress and anguish of life and to provide love, peace, and a lot of other great things we're going to mention. So peace is a huge uh I was going to say a huge piece of the puzzle <laughs> for him to want to commit to a woman. Now let's get to number two. And number two is a man needs unique value. Now that's a term I kind of just came up with. And when I say came up with, because I, I haven't heard anyone phrase it that way. But, but all it simply means is that he has to view you as different from the rest. You have to present a value that he doesn't feel like he gets from other women. Now, this isn't about you trying to, again, make yourself something you're not to become that unique value. No, by simply embracing the things that men need in general can, can basically separate you from the pack. Because I think with a, what a lot of women do not understand let me say it like this. A lot of women believe that there's tons of great wife material women just all over that men just won't choose from. All right? And it's like, yo, if you sit down and talk to men, they're not getting the qualities they need and desire from a lot of women they meet. All right. They might get a little something here, a little something there, but they're not getting the full package or a strong enough package from one woman. But when one woman does come with that, she immediately separates herself from the pack. Even if, as, as the example in the story, she's a great woman, she does separate from the pack, but there was still something missing. And I'll tell you what that other thing missing is. Put a pin in that. But still, you still just on that first level separate yourself from everybody else because you're bringing forth so many great qualities that a lot of women are not exuding and showing while dating men and while living just living their life in general all right so that unique value is just being your best you just just focus on that focus on am i where i need to be am i healed am, am i walking in uh, a loving positive energy am i walking in my femininity like these are the things that will magnify and bring out that quote unquote unique value all right but again Please understand that even at your best, you won't be every man's unique value or you won't be every man's, uh, you, won't you won't be what every man essentially wants to at the end of the day commit to. You're not for everybody and that's fine. Everybody ain't for you either. 
But you got to focus on being your best. And yes, that, that unique value that when he can say, damn, she's not like the rest. That's when this man's like, all right, I got to lock this down. I, now his willingness to commit just went up big time because he doesn't feel like I can get this anywhere. This is unique here. This is different from everybody else. So I got to do something about this before I miss out on it. So now let's keep this going to number three. But before I tell you number three, listen, if you want to get to your best version, the best version of yourself, you want to heal, you want to find your purpose, you want to exude that feminine energy, you want to start meeting more serious minded men, then join my membership program. Click the link in the description or in the comment section or go to receivingmyblessings.com. It is a coaching membership program that has helped thousands of women. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. We're, it's going to help you achieve a higher quality of life. It ain't just about meeting the great, a great man and a great partner is going to be a part of the process, but that's not just the focal point. It's about you and your happiness and all that will come from that as well. So again, click the link in the description in the comment section or go to receivingmyblessings.com. So again, number three is he needs to have connection. Now, I usually leave the connection part to the end. But I'm going to throw it in the middle real quick, all right? And let me say, let me say this. I, I'm going to be very honest. A lot of men don't fully understand connection. So I have to admit that there are plenty of men who will commit without connection. I want to be clear about that. But I do think that there are men who, either once they have experienced that connection before, or they're, they're just more in tune spiritually, they have a greater understanding of it. it. It becomes a greater priority because they know this is a piece of the puzzle. And so, and for some men, they may not be able to explain it and articulate it, but they still understand it at their core. So going back to the story, she was a great woman. There wasn't anything, quote unquote, wrong with her. But that deeper, true connection was not there. It was kind of like everything on the surface was amazing. The resume looks great, right? But do y'all really get each other? Are y'all really on the same page? Can y'all truly be yourselves with each other? You know, do you, tr do you two truly inspire each other and make each other better? You know, these are the things or the ingredients that help you understand that a connection is here. And, and also understand that, listen, and, and this is what I have studied and learned and I truly believe, connection is not created nor destroyed. It's either there or it's not. And so what you find with people who can say they have experienced the connection is that it is pretty much instant. It is a very fast, it's, it's intense, it hits you right off the bat. It doesn't take you months before you're like, oh, wait a minute, I think we got a connection now. No, like that thing is going to slap really fast. Now, you may not fully understand. You may not know what to make of all this, but you will feel it. And again, when you sit down and interview or survey people, they can tell you, even if they weren't able to say verbally after the first week or first few days, this was a connection. They can tell you, man, I felt something here that I had not felt with anyone else. It's that deep. All right. And so, yes, I do believe that even though there are men committing without connection, that it is connection that will, like, seal the deal. Like, if a man feels a true, genuine connection with a woman, it's definitely going to draw him in. And it, it plays into also that unique value because, again, it's that I have not felt that with anyone else. I, I, I'm getting something from her I get from no one else. She possesses that unique value. And because it's unique, I want to hold on to it. I'm prepared to lock it down, whatever you want to call it, because I do not want to let this go. Now we're on number four. And the fourth thing that makes a man uh, commit to a woman is physical attraction. <laughs> I'm laughing because I know, I know a lot of people, um, they, they don't like the the the... The emphasis or the, the, you know, too much light being put on physical attraction. And 
everyone wants to, not everyone, but a lot of people want to go to the what's on the inside that counts. And, and yes, you're right. What, what's on the inside is what counts, is what matters most, but we can't act like that's what, that's the only thing that matters. Um, what is on the inside, I mean outside, plays a role as well. For men and women, attraction is a huge part of it. And yes, whether it's fair or not, whether it should be this way or not, the reality is that when you see men sometimes hesitate to commit to one woman, but be more willing to commit to the next woman, a lot of times the difference is how much more he's attracted to the other woman. Plain and simple. Even though he may see a level of value in one woman and, and want to kick it with her, want to have sex with her, he may not feel like he's attracted enough to want to commit to her. Now that might sound weird, but again, let's, let's go on an even lower level, so to speak. There are men, there's, there's a level of attraction for some men that may qualify you for that man to want to sleep with you, but not for him to view you as a potential wife. That sounds harsh, kind of is, but again, I'm, I'm giving you honesty here, all right? And I'm tell, just telling you what it is. And so, again, this is one of those things where I don't want you as a woman to now beat yourself up or to try to look like other women on the internet. That's not the goal here. I do want you to, to make sure you're tapping into your best self, as I said earlier. I do want you to make sure you like what you see in the mirror. Genuinely. Genuinely. Not you're just talking that talk. There's a lot of people just talking that talk, trying to act like they're good, when deep inside, they, they're not happy with themselves. I don't want you to be faking it. I mean, granted, I, I want you to focus on positive thinking, and I want you to give yourself positive, loving affirmations, but I want you to work on the things that you can't control. I do want you to improve in the areas that you can't improve upon, and yes, that includes how you're presenting yourself to the world, how you are showing up. And, and understand that it's not just for the sake of men and, and men finding you attractive or men wanting to commit to you. It's also about how you feel. It's about you feeling better. It's about you being more confident. It's about your quality of life going up in various ways because you're starting to take better care of yourself in a way that transforms you on all levels, emotionally, spiritually, physically, all of it. So yes, pay attention to that, but getting back to the original point, physical attraction does play a role in a man's willingness to commit to a woman, all right? So next on this list is loyalty. Loyalty is what makes a man want to commit to a woman. Listen, uh, men typically <laughs> don't want to feel like the woman they're with is for everybody, bottom line, all right? Um, it, it, there is a level of wanting to know you have my back and my back only. And that I can count on you being here even when times are tough. Now listen, when I say when times are tough, this is not to, to make you think you should stick by a man who treats you like crap. It's to not make you think that you should accept the man who doesn't make an effort to move past the storm. So what I mean by that is, I'll give one small example. You're with a man, he's, he's love you, everything is great, he loses his job, all right? And that happens. Life hits, it was out of his control that he lost his job. So yes, the man wants to know that when a tough time like that comes, you're not gonna simply abandon him. But on the flip side, if this man thinks he now gets to sit his behind on the couch and do nothing, not look for work, not help more around the house, not find any way to still be an asset in this relationship and alleviate you of some kind of burdens, then you don't have to subject yourself to that. Being loyal to him does not mean accepting him being mediocre or, or not accepting him not being the man he needs to be, at least putting forth the effort to being that man. That still has to be there, all right? But yes, men value loyalty. They want to see that in their woman. They want to believe you are for them. 
And so that's what's going to make a man consider to commit. Because I've seen men who have met women who they, they view this woman as high quality, but they feel like she would not have my back in tough times. And because of that, I can't be with this woman. They still want to sleep with her. That's a whole different thing, all right? It, you know, that's a whole different discussion. But he's unwilling to commit because he just does not believe that she is a loyal person at all. And yeah, I'm thinking about somebody specific right now, but I've seen this happen tons of times. Number six is embracing and pouring into his needs and desires, all right? A lot of relationships or the relationship dynamic for a long time has been presented as the man courting the woman, the man, you know, proving himself to the woman. And of course, I'm not in any way saying that doesn't play a role or there isn't some level of that that still has to happen. However, for a man to want to commit, if it's all about what he can do for you rather than what you can do for him, then what the hell is he going to commit to you for? There's no reason for him, and again, I have to say, especially a man who has options, to feel like he has to choose the woman who's unwilling to embrace what he needs as well. All right? He wants to know that you care about what he cares about that you respect and honor what is important to him as well, that you are willing to embrace those things. Now, granted, I'm, I'm going to be real. We've seen plenty of men and get so caught up in wanting a specific woman that they've lost sight of the fact that she does not do those things for him. And so you'll see these relationships where it's the man doing a lot for this woman and that woman does not fulfill his needs. But don't allow that to make you think that that is a formula for success or that in any way is what makes a man commit. What's going to make a man embrace a woman in most cases is knowing that she is willing to pour into my needs and desires too. That she is there for me as much as I need to be there for her. That's what's important. So you've got to be understanding of that, but you've also got to be honest about are you genuinely able and willing to pour into his specific needs and desires. And what, what allows you to figure that out is one, having open communication about what the hell those things are, okay? Let's not assume, let, let's not just think it's the basic men need. No, listen, some men are different and what they're looking for specifically is gonna differ from what the next man is looking for. You need to, to make an attempt to try to learn what's important to him. And then once he conveys that to you, you got to be real with yourself. Can I handle doing these things for him? Can I sustain doing these things for him? Because it's one thing to do it for him for a week, for a couple months. No, can you continuously be the woman he is looking for for the rest of your damn life? For the next several years? Actually, this is focused on the rest of your life because if the goal is marriage, you got to really think long term like, yo, are these things doable things for me? If not, then hey, let's just accept we're not for each other and keep it moving. Let's not force the issue because that's only a recipe for disaster every single time. And now number seven, and after I give you the seventh one, I just want to give you three quick principles you need to always remember in this whole dynamic of wanting, desiring commitment from a man, all right? But let's focus on number seven real quick, and that is a woman who is supportive and encouraging, all right? So again, it's one thing to feel like you have my back, but do you believe in me? Do you support me? Do you encourage me? Or are you just negative and pessimistic? Or are you always shooting down my dreams and, and ideas? Are you constantly undermining my perception and thoughts and beliefs and my input and dismissing and devaluing it. And some of you, you have to understand, I'm not saying you do it, but a lot of women have done that. A lot of women are doing that to men and then wondering why this is going nowhere. And it's not to say that if you genuinely do not agree with this man or you genuinely don't believe in him because maybe he's, he just hasn't given you enough to believe in, all right, that happens. I don't want you to like force yourself, uh, you know, to, to, to 
again, to, to fake believe in him, so to speak, just accept it as evidence that you two are not for each other. But you do have to understand that that piece has to be there if we want commitment and if we want healthy, successful relationships. And you also have to understand, is your struggle to be supportive and encouraging and believing in him really about what he's not bringing to the table? Or is it about the baggage you're bringing to the table? Is it about the fact that the last time you felt you were supportive and encouraging and believing in a man, he let you down? Is it the fact that you've seen too many men or too many women be mistreated and be, be let down and, men, and seeing men fail them in so many ways that now you cannot, you struggle to give men that kind of trust, to, to give that level of vulnerability in a relationship? You got to be real with yourself. Is the issue within you or the type of men that you are coming across. And if it is within you, correct that first and foremost. Make sure you are truly able to give that part of you to the man who, yes, comes correct and, and is, is someone that can and should be encouraged and supported if he's the right guy for you. Now, those are things that definitely contribute to a man wanting to commit to a woman and commit to a relationship. And again, that sets up healthy, successful relationships. But let me run down three quick principles that I do think as a woman, you still need to be mindful of if you're desiring to, to have commitment and serious relationship in your life. Number one, there needs to be a deadline. Now listen, I know some of y'all do not like that or don't like the word ultimatum, and I'm not saying you need to say to this man, hey, if you don't commit to me by this, this and this date, we're done. What I am saying is you internally have to have a line drawn that if we reach this point and you are still unable to commit, I'm no longer going to entertain this situation. I am prepared to walk away. You got to go in prepared that if this man cannot step up to the plate, you will let go. Too many women, because they don't have that internal deadline, allow the situation to drag on way longer than it should. And now the man who never planned on committing to you gets to stay in your life, wreak havoc, drain you of all your energy, cause all kinds of damage, and leave you unhappy and burnt out. This can't happen. This should not happen. And for us to avoid this happening, you've got to have some level of internal deadline. And so just to give you something to work with, when you can say, and honestly, we've, we've spent time getting to know each other. You know, I've showed him who I am. He knows what I want. He knows where I stand. All right, at that point, what the hell are we waiting for? At that point, if he can't make up his mind, and I'm not saying... You have to shut the door on him forever. I'm just saying, why are you going to continue engaging in this pseudo relationship when he's clearly either not ready, not willing, you know, or, or whatever's going on? It's just not happening. So have a deadline. The second principle that you need to always remember, and this is going to sound a little funny, you can give a taste but not the whole meal. <laughs> now, listen, when I say a taste of not the whole meal, I'm not talking sex, all right? I'm not talking about getting it on. What I am saying is I see a lot of women sometimes doing, quote, unquote, too much in the dating phase trying to prove themselves, basically giving him wife benefits when y'all are still dating. And to make it simpler... What I'm saying to you is there, what I'm saying to you is that there's, it's one thing to one day cook him a meal. It's nothing for that joker to be eating at your house every week while y'all still getting to know each other or, 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 or whatever the case may be. Like you, you, you don't have to keep doing so much. Yes, you have to show the, that you possess certain qualities, all right? And, and you can show that in ways that don't actually mean, like you don't have to directly cook him a meal to show him you know how to cook and that you're domesticated in that way if that's a value that you want to convey. So, so understand that you can 
Again, give that quote unquote taste without just doing it all and constantly doing it and then finding yourself in situations where now you're getting used and actually working against yourself to commit because it's almost like you're giving someone the full paycheck at work and you haven't even hired them yet. He didn't even say if he wants the job, <laughs> okay? And you're straight sending him full-time paychecks. Like that's, at that point, why would he even say, I wanna commit to this job? I don't have to, I'm getting all the benefits anyway. So that only shoots yourself in the foot when you do so much. So be careful with, with, with that dynamic, all right? And then the last principle to remember is there needs to always be a mutual effort. I kind of alluded to it earlier, and I'm going to say it again. If you want a, com a man to commit, if you want serious relationship, it can't simply be about what this man does for you. No man who's genuine and serious about relationships, serious about you, is going to be happy with him always being the one making forth the effort and you just sitting back and seeing what's going on. You got to be a part of the, the process. You, you got to show a mutual desire, a mutual effort. You have to reciprocate. So be sure that you're, you are giving as much as you're requiring from him, from him in that way so that he feels like you are as invested in him as he is in you, that you like him as much as he likes you. When that happens, yes, his willingness to commit just went up another few notches. And again, it, it will... It will set the stage for a healthier, happier, more successful relationship. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, I'm stressing good men because I know a lot of you might look at some of these things I'm going to mention and say, well, oh, men don't want this or they act like they don't value that. And the reality is that some of you or many of you are so used to dealing with the wrong men, you don't understand what's actually valued by the right one. You don't understand what's actually needed from the man who wants to pour into you as well. So I'm stressing these are the qualities that good men value, relationship-minded, serious men, what they want in a woman, all right? So let's get right to it. Number one is a positive attitude or positive energy. Listen, the raw man, the man who just wants to have sex with you, he does not care about your attitude and energy because that guy is focused on how you look, what he can get for you, from you, how you're going to be a convenience to him, all right? So in that regard, he is not turned off by a negative attitude. He's not turned off by bad energy. He's not turned off if you come off too masculine. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. So stick around to the end of the video. But he's not deterred by that. He doesn't care about that. But a good man, a man who wants a relationship, a man who's serious minded, is looking for a woman who brings positivity in his life. Listen, what man wants to deal with the stress of the world and then have to come home to the stress of his woman? He doesn't want that. Now, when I say the stress of his woman, I don't mean he's gonna be unwilling to deal with when you are stressed and help you. I just mean that he wants a woman that can bring positivity and love into his life. Someone that can uplift him in that way. Someone that can essentially bring peace to his world. And so when you're not exuding that kind of energy, you're going to have a harder time meeting a good man because some of you are good women, but you're not positive women. You don't exude that energy that makes a man feel like, okay, I can establish a life with her. Now, I don't want you to feel triggered by this video or insulted in any kind of way, but I want to present these facts to you in a way that's going to be helpful and to highlight where you may be looking at things the wrong way which contributes to not getting the results that you're looking for. So this isn't just about knowing what he wants so that you can give it to him. It's also knowing about what he wants so that you can start attracting better into your life as well, okay? So positive attitude, positive energy, that's one of the top things a good man is looking for. Second on the list, and this is in no particular order, but second on the list that a good man is looking for or really wants in a woman is physical attraction. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna say, 
uh, look shouldn't matter. <laughs> and it's, it's what's on the inside that counts. And yes, what's on the inside counts most, but we cannot act like what's on the outside has no contribution to the dynamic whatsoever. It's going to have an impact. We all do it. Now, some of us may be more flexible than others. Some of us may not be as picky, but physical attraction, all right, does play a role. And now notice I said physical attraction, not necessarily looks. When we say looks, we're, we're highlighting more so very specifics as far as people say, okay, they got to look like this. They have to have this type of body type, so on and so forth. A good man is not as like locked into it has to be this, 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 and that, but he does want physical attraction. And even if he has a certain type in his head, if he meets a woman that he has a connection with and there's an attraction there, he will still more than likely be willing to embrace that. But what I need for a lot of women to understand is, because, is that attraction is not love, okay? And the reason why it's important, and you can read about this more in my book, How to Get a Man to Cherish You, don't get triggered by the title, all right? There's more to it than you realize. I got the link in the description and in the comments section. Trust me, you will understand after you read the book. But in my book, How to Get a Man to Cherish You, I break down the fact that a lot of women start to look at love and attraction as the same. For example, woman gets married and let's say she starts to gain some weight. She, she's not looking the way she used to look, okay? And it's a, it's a strong deviation from what she used to look like. And now the man starts to lose attraction. And she'll say, well, he doesn't love me anymore. And I will say to that woman, no, it's not that he does not love you anymore. He's struggling with being attracted to you. And when we're talking about romantic relationships, attraction is important because I, a man or a good man can love you regardless of how you look, all right, can love you, meaning that even if you weren't in a relationship with him, if he loves you, he loves you. Your looks does not, his love is not contingent on your look. However, to desire being in a committed romantic relationship with you, now attraction is a real factor. And we can't simply dismiss it and say, well, if you love them, it wouldn't matter. It plays a role. Yes, I do believe wholeheartedly that when there is true love and true connection, we are more flexible with it. But again, it's still a part of the equation. We don't just simply dismiss it. And when attraction goes out the window, respect starts to go out the window. Uh, affection goes out the window. Sexual pleasure goes out the window. So many things now fall to the wayside because we've now neglected the need to maintain attraction. So to get back to the original point, yes, attraction is something even good men desire. And I would argue everyone desires a level of attraction to their partner. It's not about specific looks, but it is about attraction being there. Number three thing that men really want in a woman or good men really want in a woman, woman is transparency. Now, this is a big one I don't think women are completely grasping. All right, because here's the thing. Men are very logical thinkers. We're, we don't speak in code. We say what it is. That's it. And again, we're focusing on good men. So don't start with the, well, these dudes be saying all this, that, and the other and confusing you. Those are not good men. Those are men who are not meant to be in your life. They do not apply to what I'm talking about here. But a good man and a man who's serious about you, all right, He's looking to have transparency. He doesn't want to play this, I have to figure you out game, all right? It's not that he won't love you enough to want to try to dig deeper and discover things on his own, but don't make it stressful for him. He's not looking for the woman who's going to make it this constant process of having to, uh, what's the word, interpret and analyze and figure out and connect the dots on his own. That's stressful. That's exhausting. So when a woman can be transparent, when she can be forthcoming, that is welcomed, again, by the good man, by the man who's serious about you. He wants and needs and desires your transparency. He wants you to tell him what's wrong. 
He wants you to tell him when you desire something. He wants you to let him know what you want to eat that day. <laughs> like some of you can't even tell him that. And that's just not really a big one. But I'm just saying like he wants transparency. And when you can provide that, that's definitely going to attract him to you. Because in for a lot of men, that's not something that they get from the average woman. It feels like a game of having to figure things out, which is why you hear uh, men complain about how confusing women are. Because women will say, well, they're communicating, but in reality, they're communicating in a way that they feel conveys the message, but to that man, it's not coming across clearly. Because she's not really being transparent. She's speaking in a way that she feels like you should be able to figure this out or, and see beyond what's going on. Now, I'm not saying every woman behaves that way, but that is very common. So when you can provide transparency, trust and believe that is definitely something a good man values and desires in a woman. Number four, the number four thing men really want in a woman is a willingness to listen. All right. So you heard transparency just now. We want you to be able to tell us what's going on and be forthcoming, forthcoming and honest. But we also want you to be willing to listen to when we have something to say to you. Now, please do not be quick to jump and think this is about just taking orders and doing as I say. No, 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 no. It, it's simply about starting with just be willing to listen. Many times men find themselves in situations or with women who are talking over them, who are just listening to rebuttal, who aren't actually listening. She's hearing him. All right. She hears the audible voice in her ears, but she's so busy processing and analyzing. She's not listening to him. And so a lot of men stop talking and expressing themselves to that woman because they feel like it's pointless. They're not being heard. Now, of course, it's on that man to recognize that if you cannot talk to this woman, why are you even with her? But this video is about what men really want in a woman. And so I want the women to be aware that, yes, you have to show a willingness to listen. You have to show a willingness to pause yourself, stop overthinking in that moment, and just listen to what he has to say and not overanalyze what he's saying. So for example, quick story, uh, there was once a, a person I know who went to a counselor with their husband. At the time, I wasn't available to help them out. And so the counselor had him do an exercise where she asked the husband to tell the uh, wife how he felt. And he went on and said how he felt and expressed himself. And then she asked the wife, repeat verbatim what he just said. And they spent over the next hour without the wife being able to say exactly what the husband just said. It was a bunch of, well, I think you mean this or what, what you're trying to say is that she was essentially constantly interpreting analyzing and, and twist, not twisting it like she's trying to manipulate the words, but she wasn't processing it just as he said it. And so a lot of women don't always realize that you're not processing it just as he said it. And again, some of this is due to the fact that you're so used to dealing with wrong men, bad men, that who are being manipulative and lying, that you have to now try to figure out what the real message is and what's really going on, that now you don't know how to take a man's word who is a good man, who is trying to be honest with you and forthcoming. You think it's something else going on when it's really not. You've got to be willing to embrace what he's saying. So you've got to be willing to listen. He wants a woman who is willing to listen. When you don't show that quality, you make it very difficult for a man to embrace wanting to be serious with you in a relationship. All right, number five on the list of what men really want in a woman, all right, is your respect. This is a big deal. You, you have to understand, I'm sure some of you have heard where women value security, men value respect, all right? To be with a woman who he doesn't feel like he's respected by, it, it's not a desirable thing. It's not something that he's going to want to deal with for the rest of his life. Now, some men, many men have fallen into those type of relationships and those men are miserable right now. And those men are retaliating in very unhealthy ways. It's causing all kinds of destruction. And yes, don't get me wrong. I do believe that for the men listening to this, you have to give her something to respect. You cannot simply think that she should just respect you despite 
doing things to the contrary, doing things that make her question you, make her not be able to give you that respect willingly. But on the flip side, as a woman, you do have to be willing to give it as well. You, if you're holding on to past trauma, if you're holding on to bad experiences from your past, and so your level of respect is limited because you feel like giving that makes you too vulnerable, that's a problem that's on you, not him. But one way or another, this dynamic does not work without respect. And what the man wants, what a good man wants, what good men all over the world desire is a woman who respects them, loves and respects them. And let's be real, if you don't respect them, you can't love them. So he knows without your respect, he's not going to get what he's looking for out of you. Now, some men, again, they've made the mistake and gone down the wrong path with that. But make no mistake that that is a very important thing. And that is something that the men are looking for or want in a woman. So respect has to be there. And if for some reason you don't feel like he deserves your respect, then I will also ask you, why are you with him? Why are we dealing with people we don't respect? That makes no sense whatsoever. There's no point in trying to continue a relationship if we're not going to find ways to embrace respecting each other. So that needs to happen one way or another. Resolve the issues or this can't work at all. Number six, and remember, a quick, quick reminder again, get your copy of How to Get a Man to Cherish You. Again, I remind you, do not be triggered by the title. Just click the link in the description or in the comment section. You will understand once you read it, you will enjoy it. But let's get to number six. Number six is loyalty and support. Now, I put those two things together even though you could separate them. But one way or another, men, especially good men, they are valuing, and really men, period, they're valuing loyalty and support. Now, please do not confuse support with carrying this man on your back, with building him up to become a man, someone who does not have the right foundation in his life, who does not have the work ethic or the desire to make things happen. I do not want you to get caught up in projects, okay? Because that is, not an, un that is an unhealthy dynamic that's not going to be good for the long-term relationship. But yes, support, encouraging, believing in him, all right? Understanding that he has to make time for his dreams. So, so working with him and creating a balance that allows him to pour into the relationship and into his purpose. Because purpose is what, what it's really about. Like, it's not even just about career and dreams. It's about purpose. So if you're a man listening to this, you've got to lock into your purpose. And if you're a woman, you've got to make sure that you can support that purpose. If that purpose is, does not work for you, if it's out of alignment with what you see in your life, then don't try to force the issue in this relationship because then you will not be able to provide him with the support that he needs, all right? So there has to be an understanding or we have to be on the same page when it comes to that. But also loyalty is so huge. Listen, men don't want, and this may sound bad, but I'm just going to keep it real. Men don't want the woman who's for everybody, all right? Now, some of you may say, well, I've seen plenty of women who y'all think is for everybody and she has a man. Listen, because yes, it's, it's not the end all be all and, and some men may not care. But I'm going to tell you that a lot of men, that is an important thing to them. They, they, they don't want the woman who's for everybody and they want the woman who they feel like has their back, is going to stick with them because it's one thing. For a man to expect you to carry him or carry, yeah, carry him on your back and get him somewhere versus don't abandon me when I'm having a rough moment. Don't look down on me when I'm struggling. Don't disrespect me when I'm in a moment of weakness. All right. You've got to show that, yes, I'm going to still pour that love and respect and support into you even in a bad moment. But again, for that man, you have to show her that these are just moments, that that's not your, going to be your continuous character, that you're not just going to be dwelling in the bottom, expecting her to always drag you out of it. No, you, you got to show that, yes, I'm going to be the man who does what I'm supposed to do, but we all have moments. And as a woman, I'm going to be there for you and show you that I still can give, pour into you what you need, even in those moments moment. So loyalty and support is a huge deal and something that men, especially good men, want in a woman. 
And now number seven, I saved it for last because to me, it kind of sums up everything that we were talking about today, but I'm, I'm very big on this and I think it's extremely important, and that's feminine energy, all right? Now here's the thing, I love y'all. I love every last one of y'all watching this video. The reality is that a lot of women have become detached from their feminine energy. A lot of women don't realize that you're exuding a lot of masculine energy that is repellent to good men. Again, the men who only want to have sex with you, the men who want to use you, the men who are not serious about you, do not care about your masculine energy. They, if anything, women who carry or exude a lot of masculine energy, you have no problem in a lot of cases attracting Good for nothing men who have nothing going on for themselves who are looking to leech off of you. Because to that man, he will deal with your masculine energy because he's looking at the, the come up of your financial stability, of your ability to give him a place to sleep, to feed him, to give him sex. He's looking at the other things that he knows you may be willing to tolerate with him in exchange for dealing with Things that really aren't desirable to the man who has his stuff together or to the good man who's serious about you or serious about trying to find a real relationship. So you've got to be mindful of not falling into the trap of thinking this masculine energy that you're giving off isn't a real problem. It really is. And let me just tell you, beyond men, forget men for a second. It's a problem for you. Whether you realize it or not, that masculine energy that you keep holding on to, that you're exuding so much, is stress. It is emotional stress. It is wreaking havoc on, on you and inside of you, all right? It is wearing you down. It is not making you happy. It does not bring you peace. And it is a defense mechanism in a lot of cases because you use it as your wall up. You use it to not be too vulnerable. You use it as this method of protection. That's how you've processed it. But the reality is it's not protecting you, it's hurting you. I tell people all the time, the same walls you have up to protect you, the same walls blocking your blessings. So you don't realize how this masculine energy is actually blocking blessings and it is deteriorating your health. Whether you realize it or not, this is real. I'm not making this up. I'm telling you, this is a real issue. So beyond just men, I want to encourage you to learn how to get in touch with your feminine energy. Now, I will make videos on that, but in the meantime, there are videos you can find on YouTube about feminine energy, and I encourage you to look at them. I don't want you to just look at my videos. I want you to simply learn and become better and live a higher quality of life. But I will provide those videos, and I have bigger plans as far as discussing feminine energy and masculine energy, because both sides need to understand the energy that's going to be more beneficial to them in the long run. And there's, there's a lot more to it, but we won't get into all the other stuff. Bottom line is, good men, men who want relationships, they want feminine energy out of their woman. And when you're tapping into that feminine energy, that respect gets easier. That positive energy gets easier. That support and loyalty gets, all those other things we talked about, everything gets easier when you're more in tune with your feminine energy. And I'm sure, I'm confident, you'll be able to find women who will comment on this video, who will attest to the power of the feminine energy, who will tell you how beneficial it has been for them to make the switch from masculine to feminine. And for you to make that switch, it may require, it will more than likely require healing from your past. You're gonna have to address some past traumas, some issues, some hurts you've been holding on to because it has created that negative energy that has then poured into the masculine energy that you're exuding out there. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. So you want this guy and you want him to want you. You're a woman with a voice, a woman who has her own opinion, a woman who can bring something to the table when it comes to making decisions, 